so with this uh, uh, we'll move on to most exciting debate uh, uh, in for the evening the controversy between vegf versus steroids if there is a patient who has uh, poorly responsive dme should we continue anti vegfs or we shift to steroids so we have two very powerful speakers uh, one young lady who will tell us that she wants to continue with anti vegfs then we have man from calcutta he will tell us that he may shift to steroids so both have to defend their case and uh, let's see what mallika has to say Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank Dr. Verma and the chairpersons and Ajanta Pharma for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, Dr. Rishi Singh just made my talk much easier. Anti VEGFs. He never mentioned steroid at all. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and that's my own belief as well, and based only on my experience. As I mentioned, patient first. There's no commercial interest in this at all. It's only my own uh, experience. So uh, the scene a uh, few years back was that we did not have strong anti-VEGFs. We had bevacizumab and ranibizumab with some biosimilars, and the results were in many cases suboptimal and required very frequent injections. And I was, I think, one of the first few people 10 years or even earlier uh, back who started thinking of adding trimsinolone acetonide to anti-VEGF therapy, and I had a lot of presentations uh, regarding that. Uh, to reduce the number of injections and improve the result. And we know steroids do reduce leakage, so they do help the edema. Even they help the neovascularization and the PDR. So we, uh, I personally started uh, adding triamcinolone to Avastin and even to Lucentis sometimes to potentiate and prolong the effect. Sometimes combined, sometimes sequential. Uh, sequentially, sometimes uh, adding steroid as one of the injections in the therapy. And this helped a lot because it did increase the, uh, num reduce the number of injections, reducing the cost of therapy, and triamcinolone itself was much more economical than anti any anti vegf available. So you can see on the left, when we were giving Avastin to a patient, that was the response. <clears throat> and if we would add steroid, this would be the response. So up to this point, I agree that steroid was a very good uh, addition. But now that picture has changed since we have newer anti vegfs and again there is no commercial interest. Um, so the newer drugs that we have is aflibercept and brolocizumab, and the situation has changed. Um, we started with aflibercept only for cases that were not responding to other drugs. But as our experience for these uh, cases increased, we found that uh, there was a host of benefits that was there, strength of uh, response, speed of response and the longevity of response, which led to reduced treatment burden in terms of reduced number of visits, and that leads to reduced cost, and the risk of each infection, uh, injection leading that can cause infection was reduced. And the speed of improvement ultimately leads to good final visual outcome, and most importantly, this was coming with zero adverse events of cataract and raised IOP, which comes with steroids, and inflammation, which comes with triamcinolone, contamination, which comes with biosimilars. So, uh, so the newer anti um strong in action, and you know they have a much stronger binding affinity compared to ranibizumab, a much longer VEGF suppression time compared to ranibizumab. Uh, so I will show my experience where I have used steroid as well as uh, aflibercept uh, for, the, uh, for a given case over the years. So this was a gentleman, elderly DME, had already been treated uh, with ranibizumab before he came to me with a couple of injections, no response. So we started him on uh, IVTA because economy was uh, uh, important. And uh, three monthly IVTA for about a year, we were able to manage. But after that time, he stopped responding. But we continued for one and a half year with one monthly IVTA, simply because he could not afford anti -vegers. and. Um, Finally, he agreed to a DEX implant because there was no response. And you can see there is no response to DEX implant either. At uh, two weeks itself, he came back with a uh, edema. And then at three months, we repeated the DEX implant. No response at all. And vision was deteriorating. You can see the vision is 660 and 24. So at this time, he agreed to aflibercept. And uh, you can see um, within a single injection, macula is flat. Vision is very good. And only at five months, he had a recurrence. And uh, now we have been able to maintain him at only four or five months with flat macula and reasonably good vision. 
So we had a dramatic and long-lasting response with the newer anti-VEGFs. And the response, both anatomic and visual, uh, in my hands, as you saw in this case, is often superior to DEX implant with the help of newer anti-VEGFs, both in strength and duration. Another patient treated with uh, intravitreal triamcinolone, then with ranibizumab, no, not improving, disappeared. This time, we, when he came after four years interval, we gave him aflibercept, and within two injections, you can see the marked improvement in his vision, even though hard exudates have come in due to chronicity of the edema. But vision has improved, and he's very happy now. So the newer anti vegf was very effective uh, in managing this case without causing cataract and raised IOP. Another elderly gentleman tried um, all kinds of drugs, ranibizumab, steroid, uh, for about a year. Finally, vision was very poor. Um, even dex implant was given, but vision deteriorated to 624N18. So now we gave an aflibercept, and there was a sudden jump in the vision to 612N12. So now we thought we'll maintain this for two years with just steroid. Uh, but that led to gradual deterioration of vision till he was only 624N12. So at this time, we gave him an aflibercept, and there was a sudden jump to 69N6 in two injections. And thereafter, he has agreed to continue. So it's now three years. He's on two monthly aflibercept and very happy with his visual status. We again thought we'll add a DEX implant, which had earlier not worked, but now it might. But again, it did not add anything to the situation. And again, we had to go back to aflibercept. Neither objectively vision improved nor subjectively. Possibly the macular thickness came down after the DEX implant, but there was no other change. Some cases will not have any resolution. This is now more than six years and going strong even now. Um, visual results are often superior with anti-VEGF, whether or not the anatomic results are equal. In most of my cases, even the anatomic results are better with anti-VEGF than with steroid. And by anti-VEGF, I mean uh, the newer anti-VEGFs. So most of my patients have switched after dexomethasone to the newer anti-VEGFs. And the treatment intervals are very long, six months, one year even. And sometimes the anatomic result is not at all good, as you can see, but you can see the excellent visual result within a single injection. Patients are very happy. Even though we tell them you have severe edema, take an injection, they say, no, I have very good vision, I'll come back later. So they take once in a year, once in nine months, with a very good vision. So long-term intervals with excellent visual results. Again, very uh, bad anatomy with aflibercept, but look at the visual results. He is going back, he's gone back to his work and very happy. Look at the anatomy though. But this is not the case with steroid. With steroid, you don't get a visual improvement. Even in vitrectomized eyes, it works for long, three months, as good as a steroid. Now, this is a patient where I injected steroid, which I don't do nowadays. For some reason, I did in this patient recently. And you can see that the, neither has the edema resolved completely and the vision has actually dropped. So the protocol, you compared uh, anti-VEGF with DEX implant, but they compared ranibizumab with DEX implant, and even then they found that there was no difference in visual acuity in the two treatment arms, whether you combine it with steroid or not. On the other hand, the side effects of steroid uh, was, uh, is, was troublesome, and they found that uh, uh, the, the overall side effects can, limits the use of steroid for this disease without any benefit to vision. And even if the anatomy does improve compared to ranibizumab, not even compared to the newer anti-VEGFs, that anatomic improvement does not translate into visual improvement. Even those with persistent DME with ranibizumab, only 30% of those had a visual acuity loss because of their persistent edema. On the other hand, steroids have a lot of side effects. Uh, raised IOP is seen in a large proportion of patients requiring repeated IOP checks, sometimes an emergency filtering surgery, uh, even removal of uh, implant. And even protocol, you mentioned that uh, though they removed, excluded the eyes that had a steroid response after checking the fellow eye, still 30% of the patients had significant IOP rise. Then an important problem, though it's not serious, is that most patients complain of floaters with DEX implant, and the number of implants you give, that many number of floaters continue to accumulate. And also, you cannot use Ozodex and even alone in patients who have large posterior capsule openings. I've had this patient with a scleral fixated IOL. It's an emergency, a very high IOP, corneal decompensation, may even require P 
PK. So you can't use it in patients who have uh, ACIOL or a PC uh, absent, which ironically are the cases which are more likely to have severe macular edema. And then uh, another problem is that when you have endophthalmitis with steroid, it suppresses the inflammation, delaying the diagnosis. Patient comes with a vitreous full of exudates but no symptoms. Uh, so that worsens the prognosis. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Malika. Uh, talk. Uh, I, Methi, you want to defend this? <laughs> I, uh, why people would have been very happy in case they were here. <laughs> Uh, but in any case, the examples uh, which she has shown, let you can come on the dice. And these because examples, it seems, uh, it seems, no, it seems that uh, DME is only ilia, ilia, and ilia, and nothing else. So I wanted Mathi to tell: Is that true that uh, we are today wedded only to ilia, or there is a role of uh, alargan stepping in here for their implant, or not? So that is the question. Because uh, Malika says that the longer duration advantage is there with the aflibercept plus the steroids ka side effects are not there. Although she has, you know, uh, highlighted the st uh, steroid side effects in a very, I don't think so. There are so many side, side effects of steroids there. Yeah. So that's what I want him to defend, whether there are or not. And does he use steroids in his practice or not? We will ask a lot of people. Uh, regarding this. Yes, Anirudha. So this topic starts with early switching. Malika, early switch. Yeah, he will tell. Yeah, uh, good evening. At the outset, I'd like to thank Ajanta Pharma and Lalit sir for giving me this opportunity. Well, I will be speaking on the early switching to steroid and refractory DME. My experience is quite different uh, when compared with Dr. Malika's. Uh, we all know that anti vegf is the first line choice for the center involved DME. Now, now, why the question of switching? If we see, uh, even with its proven effectiveness, there are cases that do not respond satisfactorily. If you see the rise and right trial after 24 months of monthly injections of ranibizumab, up to 45% of the eyes had a vision of 20, 40 or less, or up to 25% of the eyes still had a CMT, of more than 250 microns. So switching between the anti-VEGF drugs or to a steroid is a very common approach in our daily clinical practice for this persistent cases. Now, when do we call this as a persistent DME? Now, persistent DME is persistent when the, there is a persistence of CMT of 250 microns or more during the first 24 weeks in spite of receiving at least four anti-VEGF injections. So then we stamp it as a uh, persistent DME. Now, what does this persistent DME does? It induces a permanent changes in the vision that limits the recovery, even when the macular edema, edema resolves. So the prompt and efficacious treatment of DME is important to maximize the visual outcome. Now, there is definitely a rationale for switching between anti have already been discussed by Dr. Mallika that the affinity uh, of ranuizumab is more than bevacizumab for VEGF-A. The aflivirsib is even more stronger than ranuizumab. And there is something called a tachyphylaxis where the change in anti-VEGF might work. But if you see, the there's a nice meta-analysis on switching where they have compiled 14 studies published from March 200, uh, 2010 to April 2017 where they have established that switching from Avastin to Lucentis, there is no, most of the studies says, no visual improvement despite there is a significant universal reduction in the CMT. Whereas switching to Afriversa, there is definitely a significant improvement in CMT and some studies have showed a significant improvement of vision as well, which we saw in few cases of Dr. Malika showed. But why to take a chance? Uh, the other option is to switch to steroids and there is enough evidence that there is a role of inflammation in the development of DME and corticosteroid decreases the synthesis of inflammatory mediators as well as VEGF synthesis and commercially available uh, we have the IVTCA and mostly what we use is the DEX implant and there are studies which supports that it is better than the laser uh, the mid trial and uh, the placid trial. 
Now, there are a lot of examples. I have just given one. This is an example where we have been using anti-VEGF. Three anti-VEGF, nothing happened. The edema didn't resolve. The vision was unchanged. But the single injection of Ozodex, it actually responds not only anatomically, also functionally. So, there, there are uh, uh, plenty of cases where I can show that shifting to steroid actually helped not only anatomically, also functionally. There was improvement in the vision. Now, when to switch? Definitely a small practitioner, like a group practitioner me, like me, uh, we try for three injections and then if there is non-responding, as it is described in the definition, uh, we tend to shift to other uh, agents like steroids. Um, it might not be the cases in the bigger hospitals like Apollo where we can continue with anti at least six and then change, think of changing. So we need to identify the responders from non-responders. Uh, this is a very good article which actually can predict the response of anti after one injection. The patient received three consecutive monthly injections with the same anti and patients were followed for 12 months. The eyes that responded to treatment actually showed a reduction of CRT by 15% at one month actually showed a reduction of 25% reduction at three months. So after one injection, you can actually predict that how this patient is going to respond. Even this is uh, pro, uh, in, in a postdoc analysis of DRCR.net protocol I, it said that this was a long study that, is a, that comprised over about 691 patients. It said the patients who gained less than five letters after three months had a very little chance of gaining more than more vision at one year or three years. So early detection of non-responders will allow an early switch to alternative therapies. So early or late switch, I think this is the debate topic. Shall we stay or shall we switch continue anti therapy versus early switch to DEX implant in refractory diabetic macular? It's exactly topic of debate, which clearly says that DME it showed that the DME considered refractory to anti of therapy after three monthly injections, which were switched to DEX implant, had a better visual acuity and an anatomical outcome at 12 months, then those continued with the anti of therapy. There was a, another interesting study where they had compared the early versus late switch. It showed that the early switch, that is three after three injections, when the switch happened, the median VCVA significantly increased from 0.2 at baseline to 0.4 at month 24, and in late switch group did not increase. And the proportion of the eyes obtaining a central subfoveal thickness greater than 10% was significantly greater in the early switch group compared to the late switch group. So the, it concluded that the early switch to Ozodex in patients provided better functional and anatomical outcome. So, my take home message is there is a need to start treatment early and identify the responders, uh, identify the non responders. And there are studies which have showed that switching to steroids result in further reduction of macular thickness and improvement in VCVA. So, in suboptimal or non responders, early switching to steroids should be considered for a better functional and anatomical outcome. Thank you. Uh, did both the both the speakers tell their financial disclosures? Uh, your financial disclosure? <laughs> Nail, no financial no, disclosure. Malika, no financial disclosure. <laughs> because that is important, especially in this debate. So, Malika, do you agree there is any role of inflammation in DME or not? No. So, but you are a staunch, uh, uh, you know. I agree with you that early switch is very important. Before actual damage is. Mike, Mike. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can shout here. <coughs> But you want to switch to aflibercept. So you will never switch to steroids. Now you don't. For last so many years. So you will switch to steroids. Yes, sir, definitely. So one of them is harming somebody, na? Because uh, you see, well, the, both are professional. No steroids, you are. Well, that will come later on. So what? Why are you so much against steroids, and why? Why do you think he is so much favor of steroids? He also showed. Are <laughs> mic Thank you. This is the most interesting part. 
No, it's only from my own experience. It is not by any other reason where I had earlier been giving Dex implants and not succeeding and because of the cost of aflibercept. You showed at least three examples which yes. Dex is not doing aflibercept. Yes, exactly. Ah, yeah. Because of the cost, I took long time to coming to the uh, Let aflibercept. Let cost not come in the between. No, no, no. But my science. point is, for that reason, I could not take them to aflibercept for a long time. So I was going on using Dex implant without success. And then when I used aflibercept, I was getting immediate success for long duration. Repeatedly in all cases. So that's the reason I would not go there so now. So one of you have to agree to one person because either he will shift to a free recept or you will shift or to we give a combination. <laughs> because I tried combination, <laughs> I have shown it no, doesn't it doesn't do anything extra. No, so let, let's have Vishali because I think she comes from uh, you know institution where there has been a lot of work on uh, Ozutrex also. No, we do not uh, shift from one anti-vegif to other normally. Like Malika says, but after listening to Malika, we may try. But <laughs> so I think we, uh, we just gave, think, we uh, just shift to steroids, but very early. Like if two or three, I mean three conventionally, but by two you come to know whether the patient is going to or respond not. or not. If not responding, we inject dexamethasone, and I was very surprised to see Malika's cases because offhand I am not able to recall such cases. But maybe it's a good idea to pull out the data and look at a flibbercept. So Malika, you will help us you know, in solving this issue. Patients on ranimizumab or biosimilar, one one group, one cohort goes to a flibbercept, one cohort goes to steroid. And we'll have 2020 in each group that will answer in the next debate. So my experience is that the dexamethasone or any steroid group have so many complications it, that itself limits the use further down the line. They will have uh, raised IOP or cataract. They should be pseudophagic if you don't want cataract. So there are so many ifs and no, buts. But what I'm saying is in, for, the, for the sake of uh, patients' uh, betterment and because so many retinologists are giving steroids, so we want that answer, aflibercept versus steroids. That is the key, this thing. Sure. Thank so I think with this, because since time is not on our side and everybody is waiting for dinner, let me thank Ajanta uh, Pharma uh, for having all of us here. And let me thank uh, chairpersons, panelists, uh, all the seven speakers who have done a wonderful job. And uh, and uh, and uh, Dr. Amit, Dr. Shishir, Vinod, Ajay. I think there are a lot of questions still to be asked, but this debate will continue and will not die down. Thanks, everybody. And uh, uh, is, if there is an announcement by Ajanta, otherwise Sir, all of us, Sir, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I know it's quite late t today. And uh, uh, still, you know, um, we thought that, uh, you know, uh, we can wind up session a bit early because uh, some of the guests, they have already gone there. Yeah. But thank you very much, uh, sir. Yes, they have gone home also. Yeah, they have gone home also. And very special thanks to uh, Namta ma'am and Lalit sir for guiding us, uh, you know, and giving us a lot of support in terms of, you know, conducting this program. And thank you very much, uh, you know, all the all our chairpersons, distinguished you know, panelists, all our eminent speakers and consultants, those who have joined through, you know, webcast and also all the delegates. Thank the you only, so very much.